Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We give God all the glory for today, tonight, once again, for bringing us back together to learn at His feet. Shall we again begin to appreciate God this evening? Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you, Lord, for the receipt of this program that you have called. Lord, we give you glory. We appreciate your name. For we have been feasting on your word. And you have been speaking to us. You have been revealing yourself unto us. You have been correcting, redirecting, relating with us as Father. Father, we appreciate you. Lord, we give you glory. We give you all the honor. Thank you for taking your mind to us from the one to the five. Thank you for expressing yourself to us through your word. We appreciate your name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We want to say thank you. We want to say thank you because many of us, we are making mistakes. We have redirected ourselves. Lord, we appreciate you. Lord, we give you all the glory. The saints of this room, we appreciate you. We say thank you. Thank you, thank you for all you have done. Thank you for all you are doing. Thank you for what you want to do again today. We appreciate you because we are here to learn at your feet again. And you are here with us. If you will be here before we came. Thank you, Jesus, for preparing your son. Lord, to speak to us again tonight, we appreciate you. Father, Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praises. Adoration of your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We have so Lord that your presence will be mighty again in our midst today. We have so Lord that you speak to us as father to children again, Lord. Lord, our hearts are ready. I want us to pray, Father, my heart is ready. Speak to me again. This evening, O Lord, speak your mind again. Reveal yourself to me again, my Lord. I have come unto you. Speak to me, Lord. Lord, speak to me, Lord, again this evening. In the name of Jesus. We have gathered, not unto man, but unto you. Father, Lord, speak to us. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let your presence be mighty in our name. In the name of Jesus. As we gather, may your spirit dwell within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Lord, you will that as our hearts begin to worship. We'll be blessed because we came. As we are joining you online, as we are on ground, we know we will be blessed because your presence is there. Father, Lord, we pray that you speak to us again this evening. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will have your way again this evening. The Lord will express yourself to us. Everything you want us to get into this program, we shall not miss it in Jesus' name. For your son, the verse you prepared, we have to hey, oh Lord again. That Lord will rekindle his fire. We will help him in the name of Jesus. As he opens his mouth again, he will fill them with fill it with your word. In the name of Jesus. Your word of power, your word of grace, your word that transforms life will come through his mouth. Lord unto us in Jesus' name. Fresh oil, fresh unction, fresh anointing to function. You will renew upon him again in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, because of answered our prayers. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Before I go over the sound of your count, I want us to take this hymn, the first and the last stanza of the hymn. Thou my head, while I portions, more than friends, all I
your feet for you. Thanks for your grace and the release of all trust in the past five days. You've spoken to us by your spirit. We worship you for your mercy that we've experienced in those days. As we go today again, we will see you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will open the eyes of our hearts. Amen. That will be the old wondrous things out of the book of the law in the name of Jesus. Amen. Speak only your mind. Amen. Speak only your mind to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Speak to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, those that need salvation, this six day, you will save them. Amen. Those that need to retrace their steps, they will retrace their steps. Amen. And everyone will be, I mean, everyone will be populated. Amen. And everyone will be depopulated. Amen. And that's the mind of God. And so shall it be in Jesus. Amen. In Jesus, my son, Amen. Amen. But I speak to me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Speak exactly your mind. Amen. Thank you because my son, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus, my son, Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, we thank you for our fire and help us, and uh, God has been helping us. Today is the sixth. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Yeah. been speaking to us in the past five days. Hallelujah. And uh, we thank Him for expressing His mind to us. So, two more days, or uh, let's say, after today, a single day left, come to man, and God shall be glorified in Jesus. Amen. So today, you know, don't forget we are considering the thing, the castle. The castle. And today we'll be looking at, you know, the periods in which we have. Which are the last days. We are in the last days. End time. We are in the end time. We are in the perilous time. And what does that come for? It calls for seriousness and the part of genuine believers. And it's also a warning for those that think it is a joke is a woman. So when we are talking about the last days, end time, what is it that it connotes? It connotes a time in which we will be more careful than ever before. Because the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is nearer than ever. He's coming back. So you if if it means you don't have to eat, whether we like it or not, it's going to come back. Jesus is coming back. And we will be worthy of his coming in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we start by looking at the book of Second Timothy. The book of Second Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1. That will be taking one to nine. So, Second Timothy chapter three, from verse one to nine. This not also. That means unto all that you know, you need to know this also. I know you know many things. Hello, be careful there. Let them be careful. You know many things, but it's like a reminder. So if you don't know before, the Bible saying this, you need to know. This know also that in the last days in which we are, we are in the last days. Perilous times, perilous times, perilous times shall come. What's perilous? A time filled with perils. What's peril? Peril is like it is like a dangerous thing. 
That's what the Bible says. So these are the things we will be seeing. And these are the things we are seeing already. And it's a call. It's an alarm. Alarm bell ringing to devoted children of God. Be on the look. It's a wake up call. And for those that have never taken the coming back of Jesus serious, it's also a wake up call for you. That you should wake up for you from your slumber. He said, Man, they see, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. These are the things we begin to see in the last days. So men will love themselves so much that they can do everything against others. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. When the, when the Bible says, Thou shalt love. Your name as thyself. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul. So it's a reminder of what we are expected to do. So, in other words, in terms of loving, God is the priority. So you shall love the Lord thy God with the whole of your heart and the whole of your soul. Then you will now love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, you love your neighbor and you love yourself equally. So when we are going apart from that, is a sign we are trending beyond safety. If you notice, you you don't care about others. You don't even give a damn. So I don't care. They watch it. Is a signal that you are going out of hands. You are going out of hands. That's what. It is. It's not just there for you know for being there. See. So that we know when we are on the path of error. So let's go. They will be covetous. You know covetousness? When you like what others are, you are just always striving to have what others are. Hello, please let them come on. They will be covetous. So what's the Bible saying? The Bible is listing these things. That we may take note. If we are indulging in death, we are no longer in the safety terrain. You are just going far away from safety. You are going far away from God's presence. When you are in, begin to indulge in all those things, he said they shall be convertors. Both stars. <laughs> You see, these are things people in judging carelessly. Even pastors. You know, people will become full of themselves. Both parts. Proud. These are no longer safe. If they are entering into this dimension, they are not safe. So let's go. Blasphemers. They will speak against God. Speak against Jesus. That's the last thing. Speaking against the Holy Spirit. Speaking against things of God. You can see that everywhere. Even Christians. People born in, cheap, in Christian homes. Some of them are pastors children. They will be saying things against the things of God. Disobedient to parents. Have you noticed it? You just see people we wars. I watched a clip on social media of a guy who went to beat his mother. What, what has happened to him? And the people in that neighborhood said, uh, I said what? the guys gathered around him, they wanted to beat him. I think I, I think I think I didn't complete that bit. So what do you think has come over that? Kind of a human being. They will become disobedient to parents. It starts small, small. Some of them, you will, you will even justify it says, because of this and that. The Bible says is that it's a signal that you are going out of safety. You are entering into danger soon. 
when you indulge in all these things. Unthankful, unholy, they hate holiness. Without natural affection, truth breakers. Let me see what that truth breakers do. Let me check another one. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Unforgiving. Truth breakers. False accusers. You see somebody, you know the truth, he will go on his way to accuse somebody that is innocent. Have you seen it? Then you begin to wonder what is it that you want to gain? Haven't you seen such? You see somebody who knows the truth, he will go. He will just be this. He will go on his way to accuse an innocent person and when he stands to it, is the signal of the end time. What accuser? Incontinence. Let me go to some other versions. Let me read that verse. Put it in another version. They will be unloving, unforgiving. They will slander others. You say, ah, that person did something wrong. Forgive the person. You say, no, I can't. Unforgiving. Are we not seeing all those things in this time, this period we are? No self control. You see people doing, living reckless life. Some people can drink to stupor. They don't mind, they can carry the whole money they made in the day and finish it in the day of Allah. It's a signal, it's a sign of the empire. No self control. They misbehave. We don't have in Jesus. They will be cruel, heartless. Cruel is it? Why this person so heartless? No human feeling. It's the thing. Praise the Lord. They will have no interest in what is good. Now, this thing is good for my goodness. This is serious. Have you seen? That you'll be telling somebody, this thing you do it to better your life, it's for your own good. He said, No, I don't have interest. He said, You go to school. He said, No, I don't want to go. Go and learn a trade. No. They have no interest in what is good. They only have interest in what is evil. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an agenda of the devil. And the watch is when you you are beginning to chase all these things close to you. Be careful. They will betray their friends. They will betray their friends. They will be reckless. They will be puffed up with pride and love pleasure. Rather They will love pleasure rather than God. They will act as if they are religious. Take note of this. You see, truth be told. You see, in meetings like this, if you discover something you need to adjust, please embrace it. He said, they will act as if they are religious, but they will reject the power that will make them godly. So, what's he saying? You will see somebody that is so active in the church. But is not interested in holiness. You see them, they are so active in the church. You see, you know the worst thing? The worst thing is to be caught in this kind of a thing. You know, because even in the church, they won't know what is wrong with you. So they won't be ready to help you. They will tell this person is already okay. Let's go for those other people that need help. You know why? They will be religious. Especially when they are not so that other people. Most of the dangerous things they are doing, it will not be exposed to people. 
Some of them are humanized. Some of those young ones, they are sleeping with even people in the church that you don't know. They, both of them are both religious. You see them in, very active in one group. But they are doing terrible things in the closet. You know what I want to say? That's why he said, they will act as if they are religious. It's an end time spirit. So, you know what the devil is doing? It will occupy them with what is not in the paramount thing. Because the paramount thing is walking with God. Living what, doing what he wants. Living a holy life. They will live that one. They will not be filled up with activities. 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 They will act as if they are religious. But they will reject the power that will make them godly. So what is the Bible saying? They will just focus on what they are doing. That deeds. But nothing else. So once they come to church, they will, you, they will be listening to messages. But they will reject the power that can make them godly. That's what that's the What is it? They refuse to walk uprightly before God. They will just focus on religion. And it's a dangerous, it's the most dangerous place to find yourself. If you are in that category, take notes. You know yourself, you know, you are not living for God. You just love the atmosphere. You love to be called brother. You love to be called rabbi. You love to be respected. In fact, they respect you so much in the church. But you know within yourself, you are not pleasing God. You are doing what God doesn't want. In fact, it has become a lifestyle. It's the most dangerous thing. Repent. He said they will reject the power that will make them go. You know what? The devil wants to win their soul. That's why. He said you must stay away from people like that. It's, the Bible is even saying people should stay away from people like that. See, so you are like that. Repent. They are the kind who walk their way into people's homes. Take note of this. This is a terrible thing. Verse 6 of 2 Timothy chapter 3. He said, They are the kind who walk their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable women. You see, that the terrible things are happening. You see, some married women messing up. With singles, even like in the other of it is that new. It's a spirit and a plan of the devil. You see, God, the devil is brooding those people or breeding them to bring as much people to make as many people as possible into his kingdom, so that they can go to hell together. So the devil is factioning or forming or building up men. Of corrupt integrity. They are not men like Joseph, who walked into that woman's house and said, No, how shall I do this against them, against my master, and sin against the Lord? See what the Bible says? He said, They are the kind who walk their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable women who are burdened with the guilt of sin and controlled by many desires. They are women like that. Even to a lot of things happen. Vulnerable, they have no self control. They are like dogs. If there are people like that that are listening to me, you repent. He said they are burdened with the guilt of sin. And controlled by many desires, laws. You see, some women are like very filled with laws. They can sleep with any woman, I mean, with any man. They are women like that. Not even for money. So, it's not for money. They are, it's just that their heart is lost in evil. It's, the heart is corrupted. It's like that for the first one. It's such, they are such women. Such women 
are forever following new teachings. This is those people they are looking for. They have each years. Okay, what's the latest? All sort of strange things are happening. I can't remember one strange thing. They said one man of God said yesterday. I can't remember. I can't recall. Very strange. Can you remember? Uh, he said it was the devil that answered Elijah when they, when Elijah called for fire. He said, what's that nonsense teaching? What does that have to do? What does that kind of teaching have to do with salvation? Or, you know, where did you hear that one from? Where did you see it? So be careful of what you are looking to hear from them or not. So people are not just satisfied. They, are, they keep looking for what to hear. Their own Bible can is this a kind of agenda of the devil. They never understand the truth. You see, people just fail to wait to sit, wait on the word of God to get the truth of the word of God. They are just looking for somebody that will tell them one lie or the other. When you when you are lazy to get to the roots of what God is saying in the scripture, when you can't study deep by yourself. And these teachers fight the truth. Be careful of people that are fighting the truth. They are agents of the devil. He said, These are the some of the things that will be seen in this last week. He said, and these teachers fight the truth, just as James and Jambres fought against Moses. Their minds are depraved, reprobate minds, a mind that is seared with iron, a mind that doesn't want to receive the truth, is a mind that is leading to your spare. You will not be fine in such or with such in the name of Jesus. Amen. He said, and their faith is counterfeit. Oh my goodness. That means they can be a counterfeit faith. But they won't get away with this for long. Someday, everyone will recognize what fools they are. Just as happened with James and John. So be careful. Be careful what you listen to. Be careful. And go be a positive. So, why did the Bible state all this? The Bible stated all this so that we can be careful and be watchful. And that we may know that we are in that season. We are very close. He said, These are the last days. In the last days, these are the things that will be happening. We'll be hearing all manner of teachers. I just heard one yesterday. Somebody will be saying all sorts of things that doesn't exist in the Bible. That it cannot be found in the Bible. And the Bible says, do not add to this word and do not remove from it. Those are signals. You see, why is the Bible saying all this? He's saying when you begin to see it, be careful. Wake up and be ready for his coming. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. We'll go to the book of Second Peter. Second Peter. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Chapter 3. All right. From verses 3. Knowing this verse, that they shall come in the last days again. Scoffers, walking after their own laws, laws to increase. In fact, everybody will encourage us, except the people of God. The social media will encourage us, TV programs will encourage us. Even in the school, some teachers may encourage us. In the offices, you see people talking, discussing about lost school, 
if God asks us, is it going to happen? We just gather somewhere before you know it, somebody who needs a topic. Fieldiness everywhere is a signal that we Christians will sit up and know where we are. We are not going to the same place. Know your target. Your goal is to make heaven. He said, these are the things that will begin to happen. When you see them happening, know that the end time is near. The last things are here. There will be scoffers. What does scoffer mean? I'm trying to get a better interpretation, but I've not been able to see what. He said, they will walk after their own laws. You see, in a place of what? A boss. You can imagine. You can imagine if a boss is your boss, he calls you. And uh, you know, when after discussing the official matter, the next thing is discussing lots of things with you. You must be disciplined. Don't say it's my boss. That's not what you are there to do. You are not there for that matter. You are there. What you are done with offic- official matter? Sir, I don't do that. I don't talk about that, sir. With all due respect. Thank you, sir. Or you just ignore. Sir, are we done? You see, you are done. You, you, the man is discussing. As you, you are here for official matter, he has done what you are there to do officially. And the next thing, he began to discuss lots of things with you. What do you do? do you, are you going to stay there because you respect him? You can't respect any man above God. Because on the day of judgment, there's nothing like that. Is that man that made this in it? Nothing like that. So excuse yourself without apology, without being root. Sir, are we done? Is that all you want me to do, sir? All right, sir. Thank you. You will know. You will know. You will know you are not interested. You go there because of Jesus. I see, where is the promise of his coming? Have you noticed? You know what somebody told me one day? We were discussing the matter. I said, ah, this is it's not, it's not, it's not an issue. We just pray about it. And God will deal with the person that did that. He said, no, 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 no. Don't you know that what we delay? You know, that method will not be fast. I, I just laughed. There's nothing like that. There's no body, there's no spirit, there's no power that is faster than God. It's a lie of the devil. Is a lie of the devil when they tell you uh, when you follow God's way, you are looking for joy. You say, I trust God. And somebody is telling you, that method, you better do what they ask you to do. Say no. God's time is the best. Do you know some people, they've gone to be earlier, they've gone ahead of God's time and it led them to death. You don't know. There are some people. Opportunity they got, job opportunities they got. So a lawyer was telling me about his fellow when he was in Lagos. He said they were they were making so much money there that when they want to share their extras, oh a lot of money. He said as I'm talking now, he said, I think God told him to leave that thing. He said as he's talking, all those his colleagues are dead now. There are opportunities. There are traps of the devil. Don't say when they were saying, No, I'm, I don't do my own things like, like, like that. I follow God's principle. Somebody is telling you, hey, That one may not work fast. Follow this method. If you do like this and like that, you'll get what you want fast. Say no. They that wait upon the Lord shall be strong and do expect. They will run and not be weary. So what are they saying? You will be strong when you wait. So you say when your time comes, you just be smiling like he will. They will wonder. What are this person done? You know you are sowing into your man. You will spiritual man. You know I was in a place of prayers like three years ago or two years ago in Abuja, and that person was saying, hey, "Watch out! What is your labor for God? By the time you begin to reap it." He said, it will be like, you will begin to ask yourself, what is it that I've done? To deserve all this. You know why? When you wait patiently, don't let them lie to you. Don't follow them. Don't follow the way of the world. God will reward you. You know what I say? He's a rewarder 
of those that are diligently seeking. So you know what people will say? And they will be saying, where is the promise of his coming? Do you know that's what some people are saying? They've been telling us Jesus is coming since. So where is he now? In fact, when they are saying that, it's a signal that his coming is nearer than ever. If you hear anybody, you are preaching to somebody, or you're just, just talking about something, and that person says, But if you say Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, says, Where is he now? It means it's a signal for you to wake up and say, Hmm, Jesus is coming soon. The Bible says, Those are these signs we will begin to see in the last days. And say, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the Father fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of his creation. So that's what they'll be saying. Take notes. Let's jump. We're going to jump to verse 8. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But beloved, see the warning now. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. So when they are saying, see how many years have gone. He doesn't see it that way. It will just be a year he has seen. So what is that I say? Yeah, see, this is the day of my great great grandfather. They are the same Jesus is coming. So because of that, you think he will not come, you are deceiving yourself. The Bible says, don't be deceived. Though. If I said there are the signs of the last days. Now when you begin to hear that, you know that the coming of Jesus is, is, is getting closer. So he said, we should not be deceived. And a thousand years as one day before God. So in this one thing, you are calling a thousand years like a just a single day before God. The Lord is not slack. Now, so why is it that God has, Jesus has not come? This is the reason. Listen. The Lord is not slack. Concerning his promise. As for men count slackness, but is long suffering. So God has long suffering. Is suffering that the way sinners keep sinning is being patient with them. So he's enduring. I would like this. It's like he's a, a suffering to him. Yes. You see when sinners keep committing sin, or when we commit sins, it's like you are suffering the Lord. So he's enjoying it, and waiting, say, let me give them more time. And eventually, that Yahweh can still be saved. Let me give them more time. And eventually, that girl that is sleeping with all, God, all sorts of men may be saved. Let me give them more time. May paraventure that person that is involved in the ritual or occultic practices. Let me give them more time. But then they will be saved. So when you, you are here making fun that I have seen the other people say, oh, he's praying for me. But I will enjoy it. I will enjoy it. I hope my word will eat him one day and he will get saved. So let me leave them here. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men can't slack it. But he's not suffering to us what? Not willing that anyone should perish. Listen to the truth. Let me tell you the truth. You see all those unbelievers you are saying last time. The Bible says God doesn't want any of them to perish. In fact, God doesn't want anybody to go to anywhere. And that's why he's willing to say, no, wait. Don't blow the trumpet yet. Let's try to go happy. Let me wait. I want more to be safe. I want to snatch more. And here you are there. I say, no, no, let me enjoy my life. Do you want to go and enjoy your fire? Is fire enjoying? And God is there saying, let me be patient. He said, God is not willing that anyone will perish. Someone that is boggling banks. Carrying God, shooting, carrying bags of money. God is saying, I love this person. 
You that you are saying, ah, me, I love the giant, I don't have time. And God is saying, so, I wish this, my boy, this my son, this my daughter, daughter can get saved. He doesn't want anyone to pay. Including those prostitutes you are looking at. God is hoping one day, can this ladies be saved? This outcast, so-called outcast before men. God is saying, I still love them. You go there, you see all sorts of girls, young and old, being involved in sex trade. And God is saying, ah, the people have written them off. So this one, they are outcasts, useless human beings. And God is hoping one day, I wish, I'm hoping that these people get saved one day. Yes, they are included. See how the Bible is it. Not willing that anyone should perish. Not willing that anyone should perish. I don't know whoever you think is an actor. Instead of forsaking that person and writing that person out, what can you do? Even if it's a prayer, can you just pray for that person? Pray for them. Are there people you think they've gone so far? The hand of the Lord is not too short that I cannot see. His hand is not too short that I cannot give salvation. Possibly there are people like that. Begin to put them in your prayer. But that all should come to repentance. See what God says. You know that was the Bible says all, including prostitutes, thieves, and robbers. Criminal. The Bible says God is waiting that all of them should come to repentance. And that's why if you are saved, you must do the work. He said, Go ye. Preach the gospel. Baptizing them in the name of God also, and lo and with you. God is waiting on us. But the day of the Lord will come. As it is in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great loss, and the elements shall melt. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in Jesus. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are there shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Listen, take note of this verse 11. See then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be? What is seeing? Seeing that all these things is, are real. What manner of persons are we to be than to be holy? Praise the Lord. What manner of persons ought ye to be? In all only conversation. Conversation. What's your conversation with people? When they are talking about all sorts of things. Please let the dog be locked at all time because of that noise. Let the dog be locked at all time. Praise the living Jesus. Then if you watch our conversation, what are the things you are saying? They are back, they are backbiting on someone you are seated there on the people. And you are even putting your own things. Yeah, see his eyes. See his eyes. We need to be careful. We need to be very careful. Praise the living Jesus. He said, we should watch the conversations that happens around us. We should not indulge in all those things. He said, and we should live in God's limits. Verse 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. You see, is it one of the things, if you notice whenever they talk about that truth, you are not excited about it. You are not happy. Check yourself. Check yourself. I'm not the one that wrote about it. He said we should be looking out for it. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day. He said it's like, ah. It's like Jesus is just come now. I don't know how many of us can say Jesus come now. I know I will make heaven. I don't know how many of us can say that. 
It's a challenge and it's a call unto seriousness, unto living a careful life. Because whether we like it or not, whether you say you will not come forever, you are just wasting your time. He will come. Whether they are talking about it in your church or not, he will come. He will come. And the Bible says, the Bible encourages us to be watching out for it. He said we should ask for it. Praise the Lord. Looking for an estimate of the coming of the day of God. Wherein the heavens be on fire shall be dissolved. And the elements shall be with fire and it. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for a new heaven and a new earth. Wherein dwelleth righteousness. So we are open to go into a place where righteousness dwells. Therefore, it's only the righteous that can enter his way. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent. You know what I say? Try to say no. You know we are not under the law. We can do any other. You don't have to, to be too careful. You all this one that you are like silly cocoa. This issue of the thing. What is your problem? Come on. Direct small now. The Bible says, do seek God with diligence. Praise the Lord. He said, Wait for beloved. See that you look for something. Be diligent that you may be found of him in peace. That when Jesus comes, you may be found of him in peace. What does that mean? You are found to be at peace with him, not as, as enmity with him. Take note of that scripture. That you may be found of peace with him at his return. That means two things we have when Jesus comes in return. So people will be found at peace with him. That means they are in one accord. Some people will be found at enmity with him. They are against him. We must be found at peace with the Lord Jesus Christ. That means we are ready for his coming. We are living righteously. We will be found worthy without spots. What are spots? Sin. Sin. Sin and the spots. It's like a white garment is on you and it's not meant to be stained. Like they said, you have a white garment. The only way to qualify to enter for this audition is let there be no stain. And those things are likely to be seen. They are likely to sin. He said we should be spotless without spots. Blameless. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Because the Bible says we should be how do we do it? How do we get to that point? He said we should be diligent. No one ever does. No one ever says in your fight against sin, you've not fought to the point of shedding your blood. What? And somebody said that you don't have to, you know, you know, are you the one that killed Jesus? But this is in your fight against sin. You've not fought. It's in the New Testament. You've not fought to the point of shedding your blood. That's to tell you how serious you need to avoid sin. So it's as if the Bible says, even if you have to fight to the point of shedding your blood to stay away from sin, so be it. That's it. Because sin and heaven, they are not together. May God help us in Jesus' name. Blameless. And he said, and accounts that the long suffering of our Lord Jesus. Is our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved Lord Paul, as according to the wisdom given unto you, as written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. You see, there are some things that are not easy to get. That I'm not the one that is reading. 
Some things in this epistles they are hard to understand. So we should leave God to get the mind of God and don't start confusing yourself and people. If you don't know it, leave it. Go and ask people that know it. That's why the Bible says not everyone should be teachers. We must rely on the Spirit of God. May God help us in Jesus. We stay there unlearned and unstable rest. That's the lesson. And that's why you see some people are, they are arguing on things in the Bible. Should we do this? Should we not do this? You see all sorts of arguing, arguments. The Bible says we should need, we need to, by the help of the Spirit of God, get it right. Because there will be no excuse. Whatever you don't get, you know, ignorance is not an excuse. Like they give you an exam, they say, right, they say, uh, they said, write this thing. For instance, they said, they give you a question, they say, give us the answer. They say, you know, please, you know you are my teacher. Just bear with me, you know. I was unable to read my book. That's why I told you the answer. No, that is not an excuse in the book. So if there are things you don't understand about the word of God, if there are things troubling your mind, you don't know what to do about it. Pray to God and seek counsel to take the right decision. Because once you get it wrong on earth and you take steps that will lead you to hell, it will be too late. Ignorance is not an excuse. He said, We did our own leg and on stable, the rest. That's W R E S T. Rest. Wrestling, they are wrestling, arguing, and it's not supposed to be like that. I don't believe in that one. We don't believe in that one. You believe in that one. It won't be even be an excuse that say, "Hey, my this one, my church doesn't believe in it." But that's why I did it. We go there for in Jesus' name. As they do, also they order scriptures. So the Bible is talking about it, that there are some scriptures some people don't understand. And because they don't understand it, they are doing whatever they like. Like we gave some examples, we dealt with some of them in the past by the help of God. And they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. He said, even if you misunderstand the word of God, it's to your own destruction. May God help us. And give us understanding. Ye therefore, belong. See him, you know these things before. He will, lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked. Errors. If there are errors and principles of men that are now coming, some of them may be pastors, that can lead you to hell. The Bible says, stay away from them. There won't be something like that. You know, I made this mistake because somebody taught me to do so. He said, Ye therefore, belong. See, you know these things before. Beware, lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness. So there are some Christians that are steadfast. Steadfast. In the things of God, they are doing their best to please God. But some of them on their way, on their journey of life, they will come across some people that will say something that will negate that. The Bible says, don't listen to them. Perhaps you sure there are some people in that condition, that, that situation. Now. There's something you've been doing so well with God and you are conveyed about. And somebody is trying to turn it around. Be careful. There will be no excuse. Ah, it's the one that is led me. It's nothing like that. Though. Amen. It's nothing like that. Whether you are fit or not, that's what they want to say. May God help us to be fit for heaven in the name of Jesus. So he said, so you will fall from, he said, beware that you don't fall from your own steadfastness. Remain steadfast. Remain steadfast. He said, but grow in grace. What is grace? It teaches us to say no to sin. That means it can grow. 
Your ability to see no to sin can grow. That's what the Bible says. When you are steadfast, you will begin to grow more capacity to stay. You begin to see that things you used to do before. When you strive, he said you diligent. The Bible says be diligent in it. When you are diligent at it, he said, see there's this song. Each victory we help you. That's what this Bible says. Ah, no, that to me. You not to temptation. For you didn't see. So you see a girl, she's just trying to get close to you. Or you see a lady, whether you are single or you are married, as a man. You see that lady, you know the intention of this lady. You know she's a wayward lady. And you see that kind of a lady always trying to get you trapped, to get to have something to do with her. It's happening. There are situations like that. The Bible says each victory will help you and not that you that's what they're going to step out of. Very important. Grow in grace. Grow in your ability to stay not to sin. That's the name. He said, the grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching us to say not to sin. So you grow, when you practice it, when you do away with sin, you begin to grow capacity to do more for God, to be more holy. That's why they sing that. Each victory will help you. Ah, no, that to win. You don't do that patient for you the anything. Fight my fully or what? Dead passion, so do you call simple passion? You'll be seeing temptations coming your way. You'll be seeing sin displaying itself to you. Say, so stay away. If your own is feasting of immorality or on social media or whatever. But I don't say you stay away from it. You see, it's called away from it. Don't say, let me check, let me check. You know, because once you start to go deep and deep, it eats your soul. Every corruption of the devil starts from the soul. Every sin starts from the soul. Your thinking, your heart, meditation. That's why God says, let the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you. You want to say, get your heart with all diligence. From out of it, commit all the issues of the world, art, of the world, rather, of life. Out of it, come all the issues. Some people do. Some people are so weak. Everything that comes to their heart, you should learn how to reject some of the things that wants to patronize your heart. It's not everything that stays in your heart that you now start meditating on. No one has just meditate on the word of God day, day and night. So guide your heart with all the diligence. Every sin starts from thinking. You think about something before you do it. So there you must learn how to manage your thoughts. Whenever a thought that is not godly comes, you know how to subdue it by the Spirit of God. You must learn, learn. Learn it. That's why I say, do it with all diligence. Grow in grace. I mean, in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we move on. We move on. So we, we are just looking at what are the things we must be careful about as we wait on the Lord Jesus Christ. As we are expecting His coming. What are the things we must watch? What are the things we must stay with? What are the signals? Praise the Lord. Let's check the book of Jude. The book of Jude. We take from verse 14. God help us in Jesus' name. And even also the servants from Adam. Prophesied of this, you know, Enoch. Bible says Enoch walked with the Lord and he was born. So since then, in Genesis, yes, the Bible says Enoch prophesied of some of these things that will be happening in this same time. Enoch also, the servant from Adam, prophesied that means if they want to count people, seventh generation after Adam, prophesied of this. Say, behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his 
truth. That's in, in Genesis. He said he prophesied. The Lord comments with 10,000 of his sins. Verse 15. To execute judgment upon all. He said, We are. I mean, I mean, the judge. God said, The Bible says, God will execute judgment on all. Those that are living well and those that are living anyhow. The Bible says, God will execute judgment on everyone. Believers, unbelievers. Those that are serious with the things of God in the church. And those that are not serious with the things of God. Those that are not pleasing God. He said, God will execute judgment on all. Upon all. And to convince all that are ungodly among them of what they are ungodly is. Where they are ungodly committed. And of all their hard speeches, all those speeches you used to say about the people of God, you make fun of the people of God, they say, ha ha, Pastor, what's wrong with you? Are you the one that killed Jesus? God said, You will judge all those words. He said, You that you are not serious and you are still afflicting. Those ones that are serving, serving God diligently with your words, he said you will give accounts. He said you will be judged for all those things. And of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken, he said every idle word that man speaking, you will give account. So every word we are saying, you will give account. I can talk, me, I can talk. You don't know me. Eh, I can abuse. You will give account. He said, which ungodly sinner has spoken against him? He said, you are speaking against God. You think you are talking about that person? That child of God? Now, you are hitting a pool of fire. He said, he will do you. Every ungodly sinner, every word ungodly sinners have spoken against God. He said, All those evil you are speaking against preachers, against the people of God. You are making fun of them. You are harassing them because they are preaching the gospel to you. Can we begin to tap into this idea of God? God is saying, My spirit will flow. Only that will flow. God is saying, I can see. God is saying, I look everywhere, I can see that the devil is spreading sin. But God is saying, I have a bigger agenda. Starting from the church of God to unbelievers. God is saying, holiness. We begin to you know, we say this is my agenda. I have the capacity to make it flow. Will you now resist that flow? Will you build a resistance against the flow and the agenda of God? Will you allow the work of God to, to have a perfect flow in you? Look at what he said. He said, and they will not need to teach their neighbors. Nor will they need to teach their family. And this is why we need to begin to pray. Christians, we need to pray. Lord, that's what they call. Let thy kingdom come. That's the kingdom of God. Coming down to earth. That's the meaning. You see, what is being done in heaven? He said, as I said, let thy kingdom come. You know when they say, when Jesus, they say, Jesus, teach us how to pray. When you pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, and look be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is the good. But what you think of it, what you think is that is building resistance. And that's why Christians must wake up. We need to pray. Lord, let your kingdom come. Permit the heart of man. This is your will. You said this is what we have. He said the knowledge of God will so spread that everybody, both young and small, they will live for God. Can we begin to allow? You see, this is a decree of God for this end time as well. You see, we earlier on we've been able to be, to look into what is it that is happening, that is ravaging the heart of man. Sins, all sorts of things. He said, in the last day, 
there will be this things, there will be that. But God is saying, go beyond that. I have a plan. My plan is to spread the fear of God, to spread holiness, to spread righteous living in such a way that everyone is possible. And the word of God, it cannot happen without the word of God coming out. Because the word of God will break all those resistance of the devil in the heart of men. And we are praying to God that his kingdom will come. This time we come fast. When righteousness will engulf the heart of men. When holiness will engulf the heart of men. That's what the Bible says. He said, and they will not need to teach their neighbors. Oh my goodness, we pray for a time like this. You know what? Earlier we read, God said he's waiting. Oh my goodness, you know what I The Bible says God is enduring that the man will not go to hell. That man may be saved. He's not said the only way I can do it is I will make the knowledge of man, the fear of God, to flow into the acts of men. And they will not need to teach their neighbors. No, we don't need to teach their family. Say you should know the Lord. For everyone from the least to the greatest, we already know you. Lord, we call for a time like this. Can we pray in few seconds or minutes? I don't know. Lord, let this agenda of yours and make the end of men in the name of Jesus. Let your spirit flow. Let salvation be rampart. Even the one that is saying they are people, the one people have said they are outcasts. Let salvation break out. In the midst of prostitutes, in the midst of kidnappers, in the midst of higher killers, let salvation break out. It's possible. That's the word of God. Can you pray that way? He said, and they will not need to teach their neighbors. But we don't need to teach their family, saying you should know them. They everyone, for everyone we know them, from the least all my good. Including politicians. You begin to do, they will begin to do right to you. He said, this is my own plan for this entire. You've been able to look into the devil's plan. But God is saying, I want righteousness to spread like white fire. You see those people that you to see, do any of them, you begin to see them living for God. You begin to meet them and say, ah, Hello, what are you doing? You are reading your Bible. Say, Yes, I'm not a child of God. Lord, let salvation spread. This is your will for this empire. He said they will not need to take them. Even your family. You see that person that you are seeing as the black sheep of the family. The Bible says they will know me. But we need to pray. Lord, let your spirit spread. Let your agenda begin to make, be made manifest. Let there be manifestation of righteousness. Salvation spread like fire. You will see terrorists saying, Lord, we are come to you. It's possible. And robbers. Jihadists. Moko Alam saying, no, we don't know you. Jesus, we want to accept you. It's possible. That's the will of God. He said, you won't be begging them to know God. He said, you will pray. Lord, let it come. Let it go on. That's what I say. Let it come. Oh, Lord, we pray. Thee. Let it shine. Oh, this is the blessing he's talking about. We are waiting. We are waiting for revival there for men. This is the true revival. Not just us. No, no, no. Revival is not the bad news. This is the beginning of revival. Knowing the Lord. Please in Him. Lord, let it spread. In the name of Jesus. We pray, let your kingdom come. That will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Let salvation spread. In the name of Let your rich be rich. Let the other man be safe. Let the stubborn after be, be yielding. 
Let every leaf from their mind and fear mind be set free to accept the truth of the gospel. Lord, we beg you, let that be a release of your spirit. That we go against the Babylonian agenda of the devil. That many may be snatched into your kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Zekateka. Lord, we pray thee. We pray thee. Let that kingdom come. That we be done on earth as it is in heaven. Fill men, snatch men, snatch women, snatch children, snatch teenagers from the grip of the devil. Let righteousness reign. Let righteousness reign. Zekalot, Zekeketor, Zukalata, Zekelekakati Yapa. Let's pray this. It's important in the heart of God. Can you join God? You know? Zekeleketekete, Shatakabala, Jekede, Kalia Prakazo. Lord, we pray for your mercy. Let salvation reign like fire. Even those who that men are forsaken, say this was our outcome. Some of them are in prisons already there. Some of them are in convicted several times and released. And men are saying, this one, let him just go. Let him go and waste his life. This one cannot hear. Lord, this is such thing. If you know such people, put them in your prayer. They are men like that, but God says, they will know the Lord, everyone. Lord, please, make it a reality. Engage the heart of men. We pray. We stand in God this moment. You pray that you visit those out. Uh, or even those ones that say, no, I can never. No, it's not, I'm not called about. Let them become instrument in your hands. Let salvation become rampart. Let repentance become rampart. Every stony heart, let them become part of flesh. In the name of Jesus. Je te lèque te te For Jesus, my name, we are praying. Let's look at John chapter 6. So that we can understand it from verse 35. John chapter 6 from verse 35. He said, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me. Praise the Lord. Amen. 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Follow. Is the bread of life. There's something he needs. You see all those things you are thirsty for and you are never satisfied. That is making you to live anyhow. God said, I am the one that can satisfy you. Without me, you can do nothing. You see, God is looking at people running endlessly. Some people are running against the way. Rat race up and down. No meaning, no progress. Yet you keep searching, you keep chasing. Doing all sorts of evil, and yet you are not satisfied. God said, Come to me. I am the bread of life. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. You see, that thing you are searching, and you kept going on with it. And he that believeth on me shall never taste. Let's go. But I said unto you, that he also has seen me and believed us. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. God is going to say, I want this one to come to me. Let them come to me. And if that come to me, I will in no way cast out. You know that was he that doesn't come to Jesus will be cast out into the air fire. 
Jesus is saying, when you come unto me and you follow me, I will not carry you. I will not, you know what is happening? For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which has sent me, that of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing. He should dress it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone who is here the Son, and believe that on me, you that you are saying, I don't believe in that thing. I don't believe in kingdom. Is there anyone that sees the song and believes on me? On me, may have everlasting life. That everlasting life is only present in them. It's not in them. It's because they keep burning in them. He said, when you believe on me, all those things you be here, he said, I don't believe it. I don't think this thing is possible. God is telling me it's possible. Stop listening to the lies of the devil. Praise the Lord. And I will raise him up at the last day. God is saying, come unto me. You know what I don't say? Come unto me. Only that weary and every lady you are just beating against the road. But actually it's here and there. And you are still committing sin. And he's not changing you. God is saying, I can save you. That thing you are looking for, I will give you. And you have extra everlasting life. There are people that need to say, Lord, I've come to you. If you are in that category, you can start talking to God. No time is too early, no time is too late. As we go, that's communion with God in your heart. Look at it, how you've been doing it all by yourself. What progress are you really making? He said, without me you can do nothing. You can do nothing without me. So if God doesn't want anyone to perish, he does the essence of his coming to save as many as possible. That's why Jesus came. To save as many as possible. And the devil is seeking to take as many as possible to him. Acts chapter 2, verse 14. Acts chapter 2, verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the level, this is part of the agenda of God for the end time. The devil will say what the devil is spreading. But God is saying, No, I want to spread my spirits. I want to spread salvation. But Peter, standing up with the level, lift up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you. And echoing to my words, for these are not drunken. That's when the day of Pentecost came. As he supposed, seeing it is what the third hour will be. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Don't forget the other time. Enoch spoke of it. The other time, the Bible says Enoch spoke about it. Now, Joel also spoke about it. This last day. Salvation to no. The Spirit of God should catch up with the hands of men. The stubborn act, the heart will give way to the Lord. And it shall come. So, verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last day, said God. I will pour out my Spirit upon all. Take note of that. All flesh. That's why we pray that. To everyone. See, so you know what? So that everyone that rejects it will be left without excuse. Upon offer. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your men shall see vision. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days. These are the days. Those days of my spirit, not the days of the spirit of the devil. That's what we're doing. The devil has his agenda, but God also has his own agenda. And God said, I will release my spirit in those days. These are the days. Give chance to this 
Spirit of God in your life. And they shall come. Okay, wait, let's go. Okay. I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood. Before that great and notable day of the Lord called. You see? Before that notable So we are in those days when God said he will release his spirits. Before the day of the Lord, which is the rapture. So he will is left for you because God cannot lie. To yield to the spirit. The properties of the spirit. Some people have been invaded by the spirit of God. Personally. These days, the Spirit of God will begin to speak to convict people of their sin. If you reject the voice of the Lord, it's unto your damnation. It's unto destruction. And it shall come to see, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He said, I will release it on everybody. Salvation is free. When you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved from hell. Don't reject his voice calling to you, my son, my daughter. You can't continue like this. Stop doing this. The Spirit of God will be convicted them. He's talking to you. The Spirit of God has been telling you you can't deny it. He said if you yield to him, you will be saved from hell. Praise the Lord. So to those that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You men of this and hear these words. Praise the Lord. I think we should conduct it to one. Praise the Lord. So these are the plans of God. He said he doesn't want anyone to perish. He has salvation plan for everyone. No matter what you think of them. God is saying, I can save, I can deliver them. And that's why Christians, if they are upright, if they are standing, try and extend salvation to people, whether through prayer or through, me, through, through reaching out to them. Because God's agenda is that no one be led to destruction. So, with his high time, we started allowing the work of the Spirit of God. There's, a, there's an assignment God has released the Spirit to do in the lives of men. And that will be done in Jesus' name. It will be done in Jesus' name. You see? For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him will not perish. Who do, he who doesn't believe in Him will perish. That's the name. Praise the Lord. May we not perish. That's why I said, continue. Continue in Him. Continue in Him. So that. So that we, we will not miss it. We will not miss it in Jesus' So, people, you see, the agenda of God is in this same time. The people of the world will begin to seek solace in God. They will begin to come to God. God, I know, I've got into the bus. It will be happening right from now in the middle. You see people for not really coming to God, see God. Some will kneel in their room. Some will cry and begin to wonder. Is this not the same person I know? Watch out for it. Because God said that is plan for this empire. You begin to see a notorious criminal. All sorts of ill mannered people. You begin to see them crying on the Lord. He said, that's his plan. See, Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. Verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountains of the lost house shall be established. 
in the top of the mountains. Listen, we talked about some of these mountains yesterday. You see, that, since yesterday we started talking about looking into the plans of the devil. So that when you see it, you will know. And you stay away from the plans of the devil and you embrace the plans of God. That's the answer. So God is not saying all those evil mountains the enemy is planning, the devil is planning. He said the mountains of the Lord's house, fight for us. If you are a minister of God, sit up. He fight for others. The devil will want to dwindle and destroy the others. But God said no, he fight for others. He said that's the agenda of the devil. I also have my own agenda. And it will prevail. So you see what he said? He said that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. Against all the mountains the devil is raising. We talked about it yesterday. The devil is scheming, planning to bring to drag people into it. But Jesus said, I'm going to empower my body, the body of Christ. God is going to be empowering churches. But the pastors must not see that. People must wake up. Servants of God must wake up and be ready for harvest. You know what the Bible says? He said, the ends of the harvest. I mean, the ends of the earth are the harvest fields of the Lord. He said, the sickness should turn in for harvests. Men of God, preachers, pastors, be ready, speak the truth. Don't pamper, don't pamper your members by hiding the truth from them. Correct. Rebuke in love. Say the truth of God's word because God has a plan for this time. He says it's time for in which my house the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established. Not only established, he bowed all the mountains. Yesterday we were talking about those mountains. The devil has schemes. He has prepared some mountains, mountains of sin, fornication, you know, filthiness, blasphemy. He has arranged them. But God said, I also have an agenda. But I can't do it alone. You know? I have people that have come and placed in different places. We they do for me? God is asking those questions. Men of God, preachers, leaders of units in church. It's not only about activity. Pray to your members of your units. You see people in the unit. Send the truth. Correct them. It's not a, I'm a choir unit. You know this choir unit. Teach the word of God in choir units. Before you start the answer, speak the word. Let people, you see people misbehaving. Cause all of them. Preach the word. It's not for pastor. You are a leader. You are meant to. You see, God said He has a plan in this empire. He said the house of God will be established. There will be righteousness. There will be salvation. All those evil doings of men in the body of Christ will begin to go down. That's the plan of God. But God needs men. It shall come to us in the last days, which we are now. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. That's above the skills of, skills of the devil. It will be exalted above those evil spirits spreading sin and filthiness, Spread, spreading defilement. God say, I have a superior agenda and it's going to be a reality. Because it's the plan of God is to drag men. The Bible says God is enduring. He's enduring long suffering. He said God is enduring with long suffering. That many more may come unto me. And God says it's going to be real. Look how it is. And it shall be exalted above the east. And all nations shall be on it, including those nations. You see, many people may not understand what we talked yesterday. He said, including all those nations in which the devil is sitting on. Don't forget we read yesterday. He said that evil spirit, evil woman, is sitting on nations, on all people. The Bible says nations. He said, but my agenda is to establish.
nourish my body. There are all those people, all those nations where the gospel has not got into, where they are doing all sorts of evil. He said, All those nations will flow into the mountain of the Lord. And that's what we think. We should be a reality of Jesus. He said, And many people shall go and say, Come ye. Verse 3. Come ye. And let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Is the time to do that? Invite people to your church. Speak the word of God to your colleague in the office. God said you to be a partaker. Be an ambassador of the Lord. You see, everywhere you are, you are, if you are a Christian, you are an ambassador. God is saying, I can't do it to you. I need people. He said, and many people shall go and say, where are those many people that will go and see? You, you've been there for ages. You've not opened your mouth to speak the word of God to somebody. And you say, I'm a worker in the church, and this and that. See what the Bible says. And many people, you know what? God needs, you see, I was like, what my pastor said, sheep brings sheep. And not the shepherd. I don't know why he said that, but, but this is the concept the Bible is saying. It's the concept. What he said is what the Bible said. He said, and many, that sheep in the church, in the sheep food of God. You know, Jesus is the shepherd. He said, many people, that's the sheep of his own flock, We go and bring more sheep. He said, and many people shall go and say, come ye, what are you saying? Who are you preaching the word of God to in your neighborhood, in your place of work, in your class? God said, this is my plan, but I can't do it on the Lord, but I've decreed. There are many people should get involved. And this is a cry I may remember. That people should wake up on the business of this. He said, Come here and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways. That's the essence. Not that people should just come for Jamboree or they should come and dance alone. No. So when they come to church, they dance. Preach the word to them. If that is not done, there's nothing. So when people come, the essence is they will be taught. You hear what I was saying? And we teach us his ways. So if you just bring them for Jamboree, look, five hours to dance, to do, time to preach, ten minutes. Or you are preaching and you are not saying the truth so that they will not hear. He said the reason why he said you should come is that they will be taught. And he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Don't forget we address this matter, brother. That, that Jesus wants the law, which is called the new covenant. That's things we should do. So what's that? When they say out of Zion, what's he saying? Everything God says we should not do, we should stay away from it. That's what he's talking about. Everything he says we should do, we must do, so that we can get to our goal. And the word of the law from Jerusalem. Look at it, verse 5. Who oh, has a Jacob? Come here and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Don't walk in darkness. What is the light of the Lord? Every of his instructions. Therefore, thou hast forsaken thy people, the eyes of Jacob. Why? Those that fail to follow the light will be forsaken. So God forsook those people that refuse to listen to him. Please keep your camera. No of no. May God help us in Jesus. May God help us in the name of Jesus. As we begin to round up, let's look at the book of First Peter. Praise the Lord. First Peter chapter one. And possibly we'll round up somewhere here. 
hospice și atât de Who are kept by the power of God? Two faiths or two salvation. See, there's some stories they read before that. They are talking about a set of people. If we are going to be fit for his coming, first, salvation is the first key. Let me read it again. That's right. Who are kept by the power of God? Two faith unto salvation. Ready to be received in the last days. This love God wants salvation to be around And that grace of salvation will keep us on his coming. Is that grace, is only grace that can keep us. Because why? It's the only thing that will teach you to say no to sin. That's the meaning. That's the meaning of grace. Hello, children, stop that off me. They are sick of it. We have no option. We have to be kept undefined. To be kept fit. We have to be like the wise. What do you call them? Wise veggies. Not like the foolish veggies. You see, it will be foolish of us when it's now time that we now begin to look for oil. oil. This is the oil. These are the time to fill our oil in the lamp. That the lamp will not go. Do you know what? Grow in grace. You will let that sink up. And you can only grow by grow in grace by practicing it. Practicing holiness. Living only. Then you begin to grow in it. In the capacity to stay away from sin. That's what it means. So when they say they don't have oil in their lamps, they don't have the capacity to grow in grace. Oil in their lamp is the ability to say no to sin. Once that oil finish, and you can't say no to sin again. Hey, hey. That's why the foolish veggies miss this. They don't have oil in their lamp. They were not growing in grace because they were not practicing the use of grace, which is what teaches us to say no to sin. So the oil in our lap is the grace of God. It can keep us to the end. If we make use of it, the more you make use of it, the more you grow. You see the Bible saying this over and over again. Say that you may grow in grace. He said grace abound. That's why the Bible says you cannot continue in sin and pray that grace abound. Mm-mm. You see? He said you cannot continue to sin and pray that grace may abound. It's not possible. Sin and grace, they are opposites. We, we need to tap into the grace of God that is available to us. It can keep us. It can make us perfect. Don't listen to the lie of the devil, but can someone really meet up with God what God wants? It's a lie of the devil. You will grow. As you do it, you grow. The capacity to stay away from sin will grow. And we are going to be fit at this coming to the name of Jesus. If you have not really been making use of that grace, begin to take it. He said it has appeared to all men. The Bible says God doesn't want anyone to perish. He said he's waiting, he's enduring it, long suffering. That's what he that said. He said God is enduring a long suffering because he's waiting. He's waiting on men. That he may be saved. He said he doesn't want anyone to perish. Will you not want to perish by yourself? Where are those areas where you've been missing it, where you have made the grace of God to be of no effect? And it's, the, the grace of God is available. Will you rather change? Do you begin to pray, God, in these areas and these areas? I have not made use of the grace you've made available. Lord, help me. I'm sorry. I'm making a decision to start making use of the grace you've made available. Can you pray that prayer? Lord, help me. In the name of Jesus. 
You won't have excuse. You see, there's this song. Oh, let me call you, how are we? Lord, joy, we can go. Oh, let me call you, how are we? Lord, joy, we can go. Strong, strong, strong. Oh, let me call you, how are we? There will be no excuse. On the judgment, there is no excuse you can give. Ignorance is not even an excuse because God will make sure the gospel spreads before He comes. So if you are saying, ah, I will say I'm not it, it's not possible. There will be no excuse on the day of judgment. Will you repent of your errors, of your sins, and will you make it say, God, this day, I'm ready to follow you all the way? All the way with Jesus, I'm going all the way. All the way with Jesus, I'm going all the way. I made up my mind to follow him, living my life to serve him. Nothing can ever stop me going all the way. May the Lord help us in Jesus. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word that you sent from God. Your word of repentance, your word of holiness, your word of righteousness. May you give us grace and ability that the world will not stand against us at the day of judgment in the name of Jesus. Amen. You make us presentable. Mm-hmm. You make us acceptable at the end of the day of rapture in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Thank you because of our prayer. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus, mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. So tomorrow, the last day, join us. Have we shared the grace? Let's share the grace. Hello, children, come up. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord of God. The Lord of God. The Lord of God. The Lord of God. Thank you.